Hello friends, welcome to Learning Sessions and uh, today in this video we are going to discuss about the remittance products letter chapter from the module B of RBWM and if you want to get all the previous lectures, do subscribe to our channel right now and press the bell notification icon so that you get updated when so we upload the new videos. The full course along with the full course videos, chapter wise professor questions, mock test, mega mock test, case study videos, each and everything is available. Just do enroll right now and start preparing for the same and let me tell you that simply on sign up you are going to get access to all the PDFs of JAI all the four papers so do sign up right now visiting the website jaib.learningsessions.in the link is also available in the description box below so let's start the session over here and it's related to the remittance products so when we are talking about the remittance products it's related to when we want to basically transfer the funds from one user to another it's related to remittance and there are two channels which are available one it's related to the traditional payment systems and the other one it's related to electronic payment systems over there like electronic payment system we are aware of related to ECS, NACH, NACH NEFT, RTGS, etc. So we'll be talking about all, all them, right? So first of all, it's related to traditional payment system. When we are talking to the traditional payment system, we are talking about the conventional payment methods which are available for making the payments or for transferring the money over there. We are having the checks with us where you are to write the checks as to transfer the funds from one account to another account over there. They can also be deposited by in the particular clearing over there so that the funds from one bank can be transferred to the another bank. And also it can be by way of bank draft. You are already aware these are the traditional methods. After that, it's related to electronic payment systems over there. A system which will be conducted via electronic or online means or online online medium over there that's particularly what that's a electronic payment systems that basically eliminates the need of cash or check payments there need not to be any cash or check payments that is it's a paperless system almost we can say so first of all it's related to NEFT that is particularly national electronic fund transfer that came in 2005 over there so NEFT was basically introduced so as to facilitate one-to-one -one fund transfer but there is netting of transaction there is netting of transaction what do you mean by the netting of transactions right now there are 48 half hourly batches there are 48 half hourly batches that in each half hour the transactions will be netted let's say case a is to b an amount of rupees 50 b is to pay an amount of rupees 100 over here in the same batch now in that scenario if we look at the net transaction over here b is to pay rupees 50 to a over there that will be the netting of transaction so this netting of transaction is done in this half hourly batches and further the amount will be transferred but there is no limitation related to the minimum amount and the maximum amount which is to be transferred over there and also it is available this service is actually uh, available 24 by 7 by 365 days and that is available for the effective from the December 16 2019 over there and particularly NEFT is having a STP that is a straight through process which basically operates in 40 eight half hourly batches so you need to basically memorize that there are 48 half hourly batches no upper limit no lower limit okay so that's a scenario related to it and for the workable 24 by 7 further let's have a look at the neft process flow over there now let's say case a wants to transfer funds to person b over there right in that scenario what will happen the individual or the firm or the corporate that is actually intending to originate the transaction or fund transfer and they will be filling out the application form in the format which will be given by the bank over there right so particularly the form will be filled so we can say the form will be filled over here and after that the second step would be related to that the originating branch will be preparing a message based upon the same now the, actually this is to be now encoded in a particular message you know particular message over there and particularly that will be the originating branch let's say case xyz branch over here is the originating branch basically to whom the form was submitted and based on those particular instructions a message will be converted a message will be formed over here and this message will be going to the pooling center this message will be transferred to the pooling center over there where all the transactions are pooled together this is also said to be the neft service center or simply we can say nsc over there that is neft service center right this is actually pooling center over there and the third step related to that the pooling center will be forwarding the messaging to the neft clearing center now from this the message will be given to the neft 
clearing center over there which will be sorting down all the transactions bank wise now all the transactions which were available over there after that the it will basically sorting out it as per the next batch over there and the next step the clearing center will perform that is related to sorting out the transactions whatsoever the transactions were there they will be sorted out based upon the different banks over there and we'll be preparing the accounting entries that what amount is to be debited from one account and what amount is to be credited to the another account over there right so whatsoever the amount is to be debited to the uh, particular originating bank and what amount is to be credited to the destination bank over there that will be prepared so after that the destination bank will be credited the destination bank where the beneficiary was having the account that will be credited and the originating bank account will be debited over there okay that's the funda and for the, the fifth step it's related to the destination bank will be receiving the funds and they will be crediting and uh, they will also be receiving the uh, remittance messages over there that this credit is to be given to which customer and based upon that they will be crediting the beneficiary customer over there right so that's the main funda related to it and this is how the neft process flows right now let's understand the rights and obligations of the customers and the banks over there so every participating bank must be maintaining a security integrity and for the efficiency of the system that's particularly one of the responsibility one of the uh, we can say responsibility related to the bank over there participating bank which is participating in the nft process over there and fund transfer institutions shall be issuing or uh, it shall be issued by a customer in a manner so whatsoever the instructions will be there they will be given by the bank itself so the originating bank will be giving a format itself in which the instructions are to be particularly conveyed by the uh, applicant over there related to the transaction details will be filled in all the details will be filled in and customer shall be responsible for the accuracy of the particulars so whatsoever the particulars which are given by the customer the customer will be having the ultimate responsibility to the same it's not the case that the account number was 5621 and the person wrote 5629 okay so accuracy is to be checked by the customer itself and customer will only be responsible for the same and not the bank not the originating bank over there right and for the customer shall ensure the availability of the fund in the account right so it's not the case let's say case the person give the instruction that they he want to basically transfer the funds and in the meanwhile a check was honored in the account and further the amount where balance became lesser than the uh, amount which was to be transferred over there now the customer will be having the responsibility so as to ensure the availability of the funds in the accounts over there and further the payment instruction shall become irrevocable when it is executed by the bank it's not the case one particularly bank has made the transfer it's not the case the bank can be cancelling the transfer over there there is no process related to the same and the event of any delay in the completion of the fund transfer if there is delay in the completion of fund transfer bank liability is limited and limited only to the extent of the payment of interest at the bank rate for that particular period of delay let's say case that you gave the instructions on 4th of the march but the payment for the same was made on 8th of the march the account was debited on 8th of the march so what's the gap between the same that's make it 4 5 6 7 that's a 4 days for this particular 4 days based upon the bank rate the bank is to pay the interest upon the same and nothing more than that the bank liability is limited to the interest rate based upon the upon the bank rate which is to be paid and not more than that and also if there basically occurs any loss particularly any error due to the execution error or anything related to it in that scenario also the bank liability is limited to the extent or refund of the amount together with interest right so if any error occurs any issue occurs any loss occurs the bank's liability is maximum up to what maximum let's say case uh, the neft of rupees 10000 was done in that case the maximum bank liability is in case of any loss or something is 10000 plus interest based upon the bank rate and not more than that right so that was related now let's have a look at the advantages need not to basically send physical check or demand draft that's the first advantage and the beneficiary need not to visit the bank for depositing the paper instruments over there that's the second advantage and remitter can initiate the remittances at his own convenience at any place and it's particularly working 24 by 7 365 and that's these are the advantages now the second one that it's related to rtgs that is real-time gross settlement system now in case of neft there was netting of the transactions uh, that was not one-to-one -one transactions were concluded but in case of rtgs one-to-one -one transactions are concluded like if a is sending the money to b b will be receiving the money in real time 
and when B is sending to money to A, let's say case even after one minute, A will be receiving the money instantly after the same. There is no bad system. There is instantaneous in settlement of money. That's why it's said to be the real time gross settlement system over there. And particularly, there is uh, the minimum amount for the same. And the for particular minimum amount is rupees two lakh. But there is no upper limit. There is no maximum limit for the same. Okay, but there is limit. And uh, particularly, there is a lower limit, right? And for the uh, the RTS is available 24 by 7, 365 with effect from 14th of December 2020. NFT and RTGS both are available now 24 by 7, 365, right? And for the also the Reserve Bank of India has waived the processing charges which were being levied previously. The Reserve Bank of India has levied the processing charges which were previously levied on the RTGS transactions. And for the if banks want to levy any transactions on the RTGS, the RBI has set the cap to rupees. 0 0.50 for each of the transaction no more charges can be charged by the banks uh, in name of the processing charges okay that is particularly capped rupees 0 0.50 for each of the transactions right now let's understand the rtgs process flow now in india why model of rtgs transaction is being followed so now let's understand this now the customer who is basically intending to transfer the funds to the beneficiary will be giving the application form will be giving the application form and will be providing the beneficiary details related to account name ifsc code bank details and all the details will be provided and further the originating bank would be debiting the account the originating bank let's say ob over here will be debiting the account and further after debiting the account they will be creating an sfms that is a structured financial message system will be created that is a structured sfms message will be created out of the same and further this message this message uh, will be transferred further right this message will be transferred further after due authentication will be communicated to the payment gateway okay after confirmation this message will be given to the payment gateway over there and further after the payment gateway it will be actually be routed to the central hub it will be uh, routed to the central hub over there and after the central hub has actually received the message over there after that it will be it will be basically given to a central processor and the central processor will be providing the transaction to the RBI processor over there where the debit and credit of the banks will be done where the debit and credit of the accounts which are maintained with the Reserve Bank of India that will be done and further the response will be sent back to the uh, central processor and central processor will be transferring the message to the uh, destination bank over there or receiving bank over there uh, payment gateway of the same there will be receiving the message and further the credit to the credit to the beneficiary will be given accordingly. So this is a Y type model which is used in India. There are different type of models for the RTGS and in India it is a Y type model, right? So that was the process which is being followed. First of all, the details will be given, the beneficiary details are given and for the SFMS message will be maintained upon the same and will be given to the payment gateway. Payment gateway will, will be authenticated the same and further will be communicating the same to the central processor hub and after the same, after the same the message will be queued forward and further will be queued after authentication will be processed and further uh, debited from the center's bank and credited to the beneficiary bank as i told you and further after that the beneficiary bank will be then transmitted the message related to beneficiary branch and will be given the beneficiary will be given the credit in the account over there right now let's look at the rtgs and further neft over there the concept of settlement in case of RTGS, there is a real time settlement, but in case of the NEFT, there are half yearly batches. There is minimum amount of rupees 2 lakh that is particularly in case of RTGS and in case of NEFT, the minimum amount is rupees 1. There is no upper limit in both of the scenarios and the service timing, if you look at these, both are working 365 days, 24 by 7 right and for the uh, related to payment options these are available both are available online as well as offline it means what that you can be using the rtgs and the nft channels online through the applications through the internet banking etc and also by visiting a branch right further it's related to ecs that is the electronic clearing services now ec is actually used for the repetitive and periodic uh, transactions. Let's say case there are very repetitive and periodic transactions. There are bulk payment transactions. Then you will be using the ECS that is electronic clearing services. We are having the two types of ECS, ECS debit and ECS credit. And ECS is actually particularly processed under the NACH. Under the NACH it is processed. NACH is National Automated Clearing House. The National Automated Clearing House ECS is actually processed under the same. So first of all, let's understand about the ECS debit. Now, in case of ECS debit, multiple accounts are debited and single account is credited. 
let's say the case that the users gave the mandate related uh, uh, that they want to pay for utility bill or something so each user's account will be debited and a single account will be credited that's particularly ECS debit service over there and when we're talking about the ECS credit in that scenario there are multiple accounts which will be credited and single account which will be debited right uh, like like let's say case uh, company wants to pay dividend to the shareholders in that scenario company's single common account will be debited and multiple accounts of the shareholders will be credited with that particular amount right uh, the author authorization will be taken from this particular uh, um, particular account holder whose account is to be debited okay so that's related to ecs debit and ecs credit over there now let's understand the categories of ecs schemes over there so we are having the local ecs we are having the regional ecs we are having the national ecs when we're talking about the local ecs we are having the 81 center 81 local centers or locations across the country uh, and further they generally the local ECS generally cover one city over there okay and further or satellite towns or suburb adjoinings over there there are total 81 centers and if we talk about the RECS that is a regional ECS they are operating in nine centers they are operating in nine centers and further RECS facilitates the coverage of all core banking enabled branches right so all core banking enabled branches are particularly covered under the arena of RECS and when we are talking about the NCS that is a national ECS in that particular scheme that is operated in Mumbai and that facilitates coverage of all core operated enabled branches located anywhere in the country that's probably at single place so local ECS is at 81 centers and RECS is at nine centers and national ECS is at one center in Mumbai right after that it's related to NACH that is a national automated clearing house system now NPCI actually implemented the NACH that is a national automated clearing house system from May 1 2016 for banks financial institutions corporates and governments like these are the users these are actually the users let's say case there is an agency of a uh, particular uh, government which basically wants to make payment related to some subsidy or something to millions of customers in that scenario we want to uh, we want that particular user to submit a mandate to the sponsoring bank and further according to that mandate the transactions will be done now NACS is quite speedier and further it can handle a high volume and it facilitates interbank transactions electronic transactions over there which are repetitive and periodic in nature right now and also let me tell you that NACS system is what it is a web based system that users need not to come to the branches that they can be uploading the files online over there and further can be working based upon the same right so NACS system is actually used for making the bulk payment transactions like I told you subsidies are to be paid dividends are to be paid in uh, particular let's say uh, different uh, uh, bills related to telephone utility bills etc those are to be uh, those are to be recovered or collected right these are the benefits and what are the benefits to the customer let's have a look at it there is no need for a manual process so no need for manual process in this scenario and further the process is faster and easier than ECS over there and you need not to track due to the due dates of payments okay so tracking down is not necessary in case of ECS you were to manually track down the due dates over there accordingly the ECS was to be particularly uh, done right but in case of NSH this is not to be done right now what are the benefits to the organization no dependence on checks and clearance there is no dependence upon the same and if you want to pay the subsidies etc that will be taking a very less time to pay and further salary dividends pension payments are made on schedule date like you can be scheduling the transaction over here in case of NACH also and what are the benefits to the banks over there definitely the bank can easily be taking down the task that it will basically be improving the uh, customer service fast processing systems are there there is no delay on as that was available in checks and paperwork over there and also if you want to register if you want to register some payment some mandate over there or we want to collect the emis for loans or advances over there that can be done easily and that's quite a hassle free manner over there because there are no manual processes involved in there there are fewer errors in the case of nach as we compare it with the ecs over there and transactions are very quick and further do not take a long time to complete over there these are the benefits to the banks over there right and after that it's related to let's have a difference between the nach and ECS now NACH is a mandate management system it's a mandate management system and ECS is basically mandate verification mandate verification is done based upon the physical now physical instrument if it is present then the verification will be done and further then the ECS will be executed otherwise not and further in case of NACH you are going to receive OMRN that is a unique 
मैंडेट रेफरेंस नंबर यू विल बी रिसीविंग दू आर आर एन डेट इज अक मैंडेट रेफरेंस नंबर इज रिसीव इन केस ऑफ एन एस एच बट देर इज नो कंसेप्ट रिलेटेड टू द यूनिक मैंडेट रजिस्ट्रेशन रेफरेंस नंबर इन केस ऑफ ईसीएस ओवर दियर एंड इन केस ऑफ एन एस एच देर आर लोअर नंबर ऑफ रिजेक्ट बट इन केस ऑफ ईसीएस देर इज हायर नंबर ऑफ रिजेक्ट बिकॉज ड्यू टू द मैंडेट रिलेटेड इश्यूज मे एक्जिस्ट इन केस ऑफ ईसीएस ईच एंड एवरी टाइम द मैंडेट इज टू बी चेक फ्रॉम द फिजिकल फिजिकल ओवर दियर ओनली देन द ईसीएस विल बी डायबिटेड और क्रेडिटेड बट दैट्स नॉट scenario with the nsh over there there so there there are lower number of rejects right and in case of nsch there is same day presentation same day settlement including the return processing is actually happening on the same day and further in case of ecs it may take the presentation and settlement period spread over 3 to 4 days over there so that's also a particular loophole in case of ecs and further in case of nsh there is well defined dispute management system there is a well defined dispute management system and in case of ecs the dispute management system is left to the discretion of the destination bank and the sponsor bank over there right so that's the difference between the nach and ecs so nach is much more convenient much more speedier there are lower number of rejects and same day uh, presentation settlement is there well defined a uh, dispute management system is there and also you are going to receive unique mandate registration reference number in that scenario Okay, so that's the difference between NSH and and particular ECS. Now let's understand the important terms in case of NSH. First of all, let's relate to sponsor banks. Now let's say the case that there is a PSU and further they want to make payment to their shareholders. Okay, in that scenario, the PSU is actually the user. The PSU is user and further let's say the case that they gave a mandate to their bank. Now their bank with whom they are maintaining the account, they will be set to be the sponsor banks. they are said to be sponsor banks right so sponsor bank will be that bank that will be given the mandate by the corporate customer that is by the user and further through the npci to the destination bank for approval npci to the destination bank for the approval of the mandate over there what does it indicate that the sponsor bank will be forwarding it to the npci and through the npci they will be forwarding the mandate to the destination bank over there right so that's actually the sponsor bank right and for the we talk about the destination bank it is a bank that will authorize or reject the mandate sent to them so when the destination bank has received the mandate it is a bank who will either be accepting the mandate or will be rejecting the mandate and further will make payment of the amount as per the approved mandate over there the bank should validate the customer details given in the mandate over there the destination functionary it is said to be right and if we are talking about the users it may be the uh, corporate or government department over there and they will be indicating the name of their sponsor banks with whom they are maintaining the accounts over there so as to facilitate the settlement on their behalf right further if we talking about the clearing times the system will have the capability to undertake multiple presentations and for the return settlements during a day over there multiple transactions can be done multiple settlements can be done in this scenario over there right so that's the case with what that's the case with the clearing time so multiple uh, we can say presentation and return settlements can be there during a day over there right further after that it's related to the settlement finality now what do you mean by settlement finality let's say case that there is a user let's the case that there is a user and they give it a, give it a mandate and that was given to the sponsor bank and through the npci that mandate was forwarded to the destination bank destination bank will be verifying the account details as per given in the mandate over there and will be performing the transaction over there now when the settlement will be done let's say case the payment was made through the npci to the sponsor bank and it was settled now the settlement was done and once the settlement was done it is particularly final and it is irrevocable it cannot be cancelled and it is defined under the section 23 of the pss act over there kindly please note it down it is important so it is final and irrevocable and further will be handled as per the rbi guidelines over there and for the default handling mechanisms right and for the after that it's related to mms that is a mandate management system it's related to the mandate management system now this is actually a solution which is designed which is designed according to the guidelines of npci which is designed according to the design of npci which actually helps you to create a mandate that you can be creating a mandate you can be amend uh, amending a, a mandate or you can be cancelling a mandate and further the mandate can be nach debit or nach credit mandate over there okay and each of the mandate which will be created which will be provided with the unique mandate registration reference number 
it will be given with a unique mandate registration uh, reference number over there which makes tracking of the multiple mandate give very easier right so it will be very much easier so as to basically track that particular mandate over okay so that is related to mms so mms is actually designed as per the guidelines which are given by the uh, npc over there and it can be handling the uh, debit mandates credit maintains paper mandates and for the each mandate is actually uniquely identified through the unique mandate reference number so that the tracking of multiple mandate details can be made easier for the customers over there right further it's related to mandate amendments and mandate cancellation let's say case that a mandate was given as per the mms and further it was given a unique mandate reference registration number now if one wants to amend the mandate or particularly wants to cancel a mandate in that scenario user can be doing so user can be doing so and that request is to be sent through the sponsor bank that request is to be sent through the sponsor bank through the npci to the same destination bank to the same destination bank now let's understand the penalty on the mandate pending penalty on the mandates pending okay so if any of the mandates are pending with the npci okay so npci will be levying the penalty on the mandates pending beyond a agreed turnaround time so let's say agreed turnaround time was two days and for the still if the mandate is not debited or credited accordingly accordingly the incentive will be given and for the penalty will be charged over there so particularly if you are uh, let's say if you are handling a mandate clearly in that scenario a penalty will be given and further if you are not handling the uh, particular mandate in, in time or as per the TAD in that scenario penalty will be charged so in case the mandate is below rupees 3 lakh and for the pending for 0 to 7 days 0 to 7 days in that scenario no penalty is to be charged and further in scenario when you're pending for 8 to 10 days no penalty is to be charged but in case if it is pending beyond 10 days penalty for rupees 10 per mandate is to be charged penalty for rupees 10 per mandate is to be charged in that scenario in the scenario when the uh, mandate is above rupees 3 lakh in that scenario if it is 0 to 7 days no penalty 0 to 10 days no penalty and further beyond 10 days also no penalty will be charged in that scenario right if it is basically above rupees 3 lakh the mandate is above rupees 3 lakhs over there no penalty is to be given and let's understand the mandate processing charges mandate processing charges so npci levies a mandate processing charges of nach okay so if there is nach transaction and mandate is to be processed nach is going to basically levy those charges over there so when the mandate is initiated or mandate is actually modified or mandate is cancelled for per mandate npci is going to charge rupees 1.50 and further whosoever the bank is actually initiating the uh, mandate over there that will be charged with, with rupees 1 and for the receiving bank is charged with rupees 0 0.50 over there right so let's say case a mandate is initiated by the sponsor bank so sponsor bank will be charged one for the per mandate and for the destination bank to whom the credit is particularly given or something like that they will be given um, particularly they will be charged with 0 0.50 for per mandate charge over there okay so that's the scenario related to it after that it's related to settlement of clearing transactions settlement of clearing transactions now sponsor bank should credit the beneficiary account on the same day of for the nach debit so if there is nach debit nach debit basically indicates what that multiple accounts will be debited and the single account of the uh, user or the particular uh, depart, uh, particular uh, user or corporate which is actually with the sponsor bank associated okay that will be created now in case of nach debit the user account is to be credited on the same day that is settlement is to be made on the same day over there and destination bank should credit the beneficiary account for nach on receipt of funds right in case of nsh credit over there so if it is nsh debit it is to be credited the sponsor bank will be creating the issuer or the user on the same day and if it is nsh credit where multiple credits are to be made the destination bank is going to give the credit on the same day right and also it can be the t plus one debit or credit it can also be t plus one debit or credit so npci will be debiting crediting the settlement account of the destination bank or sponsor bank so the destination bank and the sponsor bank as applicable they will be settled only on the next day 
ओके सो द स्पॉन्सर बैंक एंड द डेस्टिनेशन बैंक आर टू बेसिकली सेटल द ट्रांजेक्शन ऑन द सेम डे बट दे विल बी सेटल ऑन द नेक्स्ट डे ऑफ द ट्रांजेक्शन पोस्ट द सेटलमेंट फाइल्स राइट पोस्ट द सेटलमेंट फाइल्स ओके दैट्स अ फंड रिलेटेड फॉर दट रिलेटेड टू आधार इनेबल्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम्स इट्स रिलेटेड टू आधार इनेबल्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम दैट इज एईपीएस ओके सो बैंक बैंक कस्टमर्स कैन बी यूजिंग द आधार एज द आइडेंटिटी सो एज टू एक्सेस देयर रिस्पेक्टिव आधार इनेबल्ड बैंक अकाउंट ओवर देयर दे कैन बी परफॉर्मिंग अ मेनी ट्रांजेक्शन लाइक दे कैन बी डिपॉजिट द कैश विदड्रॉइंग द कैश इंटरबैंक ट्रांसफर्स बैलेंस इंक्वायरी और अपटेनिंग मिनी स्टेटमेंट्स फ्रॉम अ बिजनेस कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट और फ्रॉम अ मिनी माइक्रो ए टी एम राइट एंड फॉर द इट इज एक्चुअली एन इनिशिएटिव बाय द गवर्मेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड द एन पी सी एज टू प्रमोट द फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन and there is actually a kyc compliant account which is actually required for the same where your aadhar card is already linked let's say case a is having multiple accounts and the account was linked in account number 1 over there so when a will be actually be going to some uh, business correspondent or let's say micro atm there the person a will be uh, you know authenticating the transaction by way of biometrics by iris scan or by thumb impressions or something and biometrics okay so that transaction will be authenticated and for the if the balance is to be debited that will be debited from the account which is aadhar linked over there right so that's a process which can be followed so what is the process first of all we need to link the bank account with the aadhar number that's the first step and transaction request can be made the customer provides aadhar number to the micro atm where the transaction will be initiated and after that the biometric authentication like iris scan or particularly your thumb impression can be fingerprint uh, can be captured through the biometric scanner over there and further after that the transaction will be uh, particularly be uh, using the biometric data using the aadhar data the transaction will be validated and pci is going to authenticate to get the transaction information uh, with the uidi that is the uh Aadhaar authority over there, and after the transaction authorization uh, verification, the NPCA will be sending authorization message to the uh, bank for the transaction to be completed over there. And once the transaction is completed, the customer can be performing various transactions like uh, they can be doing the cash withdrawal, they can be doing the balance inquiry, fund transfer, bill payment, etc. These services are actually available, right? So these are the services which are available through the AEPS that's related to the cash withdrawal, cash deposit. बैलेंस इंक्वायरी आधार और और आधार टू आधार फंड ट्रांसफर और इवन मिनी स्टेटमेंट कैन बी आस्ट फॉर राइट फर्दर आफ्टर डेट इट्स रिलेटेड टू द भारत बिल पेमेंट सिस्टम दैट इज अ बी बी पी एस नाउ भारत बिल पेमेंट सिस्टम इज एक्चुअली रिलेटेड टू अ फंडा और पर्टिकुलर वी कैन से नेटवर्क वेयर द यूटिलिटी पेमेंट्स लाइक यू वॉन्ट टू मेक पेमेंट रिलेटेड टू मोबाइल रिचार्जेस और समथिंग यू कैन बी मेकिंग पेमेंट फॉर गैस पेमेंट फॉर पर्टिकुलरली लेट से इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इंश्योरेंस पेमेंट एनी ऑफ द वेंडर्स विच आर एक्चुअली एसोसिएटेड विद द बी बी पी एस दे कैन बी कलेक्टिंग द पेमेंट थ्रू द सेम नेटवर्क ओवर दिया सो डेट्स वाई इट इज सेट बी वन स्टॉप पेमेंट प्लेटफॉर्म इट इज सेट टू बी द वन स्टॉप payment platform for all the bills and provide an interoperable and accessible anytime anywhere bill payment service to all the customers across the india that is also reliable that is also safe and for the also comes with the certainty over there right so bharat bill pay transactions initiated through multiple payment channels like you can be initiated the transaction through pos you can be initiating the transaction through the uh, mobile wallet through the mpos through the mobile banking over there through internet banking through internet over there or you can also be visiting through some agent over there or particularly can be uh, asking for the transactions through the branch, bank branch over there like there are multiple channels through which you can be initiating the transaction and can be making the transaction over there now let's understand the key participants in case of bbps first of all we are having the bbc pp uh, bbpcu now what is bbpcu it is bharat bill payment central unit it is bharat bill payment central unit now npci is designated and authorized by the reserve bank of india as bbpcu that is so as to form the business standards so as to form the rules regulations procedures for the technical and business purposes npci would be the karta dharta and bbpcu will be undertaking the clearing and settlement activities related to the transactions through the bharat bill payment system over there right so npci is bbpcu right that's the first part and the second one is related to bbpou that is bharat bill payment operating unit operating unit now it can be a bank unit or it can be non bank unit operating unit can be a bank and also it can be a non bank over there now bbpou will be choosing will be choosing so either they can be integrating let's say case there is a bbpou bbpou that is bharat bill payment operating unit is over there and they can be directly integrating with the customers through their branch network or probably they can also be having the agents above below them agents below them who will be interacting with the customers 
after them right so that's actually the funder related to it right so they can be having the billers or they can be having the agent institutions or agent associated with them right and after that it's related to agent institutions now agent institutions can be the banks these can be the financial institutions which can be acting as intermediaries like i told you now that these agents are becoming intermediaries between the bbpou and the customers over there so this is the funder related to it right so these particular agent institutions can be becoming a agent between the bbps network and further between the customers over there and these institutions do offer the services through their banking channels so what's of the different channels they are having let's say case that uh, you are having the department store which is having 100 particular department of stores we are having a chain which is having a hundred uh, department units over there so you're basically a uh, agent institution of the same so you're connecting your customers with the channel over here you're basically connecting the customers with the channels over there that's related to agent institutions and for the agents are the employees or the representatives of the agent institutions who will be assisting the customers that you must be making the payment and how you can be fetching the details or something like that right so they'll be insisting them and further it's related to biller or utility company now biller or utility company these are the entities these are the entities that issue bills to the customers that issue the bills to the customers like there is a biller entity which is basically registered with the bpps network over there and they will actually be generating the bill and further will be putting the data in the bpps network detail over there and further let's say case there is a bbpou so we are having the bbps network over there bbps network over here and further we are having a bar bill payment operating unit over there and that's the case that uh, they are having some agent institution in between or agent over here and the agent will be asking the customer and further when the customer will be giving the details the details will be checked in the database so as to check the accuracy and further after that the payment will be made and the biller will be given the credit over there right what is the process for payments through BBPS? Let's have a look at it. First of all, it's related to bill fetching. The customer will be providing. Now, what first of all, the bill which was given by the biller to the customer over there, that details will be filled in. And further, the customer provides the details of the bill, such as account number or consumer ID to the BBPS platform to the, to the payment agent over there. Now, bill will be validated to the BPPS network and once the enter details, details are entered, the due date amount uh, or due amount that will be showcased and further after that, the particular customer will be making the payment through different channels over there. They can be using the QR code for the payment or uh, UPI or for any other payment over there, credit card, debit card, etc. And further, we'll be authorizing the payment over there. And further, the payment will be settled there on. The payment will be settled there on and BPPS platform uh, will be processing the payment and settles the amount to the biller over there, right? That the biller that has actually generated the bill that will be settled down and for the confirmation and receipt will be coming to the customer who has made the payment and also the person will be saving a payment receipt over there, right? So that was all about this particular video. I hope that you must have enjoyed the video. So do like and share this particular video and do not forget to read this video out of 10 and also do refer to your friends and for each referral they sign up you'll be getting rupees 20 and for each purchase they made you will be getting up to rupees 500 and you can get your referral link uh, visiting the website jaib.learningsessions.19 so simply sign up over there simply sign up over there and after that go to the uh, referral portal over there and you'll be finding your referral link over there or on either way you can also be entering their mobile numbers on our portal and our team will be connecting with them uh their self and if any of them will join you will be getting the referral bonuses for the same okay so that will be all thank you so much and see you again in the next video